a good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Terry Barnes. I'm director of the Center for African Studies at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and I'm really pleased to uh, welcome friends and colleagues and students and interested folks to our information session today about the program that we're planning for um, next year, which we have called the Africa Connections Program. Um, before I get to the slideshow, I'd just like to introduce um, my some of my colleagues and um, uh, we are really doing something we've never done before, which is to introduce a program on two different campuses. So on the uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign campus, and we're, we're joined as full partners with our colleagues from the University of Illinois Chicago campus. So I will introduce um, our, our Urbana-Champaign colleagues here and then hand over to my friend and we're all colleagues here together, uh, Lynette Jackson, to introduce uh, the folks from Chicago. So I'm Terry at the Center for African Studies, and maybe um, UIUC folks, if you could just wave your uh, wave your hand um, to say hi. Um, let's see. I see Kate Abney from our from our um, study abroad office. I see Eric McDuffie, uh, my my colleague from history and um, African American studies. Um, Dr. Mary Gatogo from linguistics. Um, Professor McMillian from African American studies. You want to wave your hand there, Desiree? Say hi. Great. Um, my colleague from the uh, Center for African Studies, Dr. Maimuna Baro. There's Maimuna. Hi. Uh, let's see. What other uh folks do i see here okay some other might might join us in a minute um my colleague donna tonini yes. hi donna from um hi. from the igi welcome welcome thank you okay so lynette can i hand over to you uh sure my name is lynette jackson i'm professor of black studies and gender women's studies at uic i'm an african historian affiliated with the history department here um, and I'm so excited to be a part of this program. As Professor Barnes said, um, you know, we are both, we're all part of the University of Illinois system, but we haven't done enough together. So I'm really excited about, you know, this kind of pilot um, project. And I want to introduce um, Kyle Roche. And Kyle, am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Okay, and Kyle is the um, director of the study abroad program at the University of Illinois Chicago. Not here yet is um, Joseph Jewell, who is the director of Black Studies at University of Chicago, and hopefully a few more UIC people will be arriving. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to do the share screen thing, and we're going to talk through some slides that, uh, I mean, as a group, we're going to talk through the slides that uh, help explain the program, and then we'll have time for student uh, questions probably in about 20 minutes or so, and we're thinking this whole thing should take about an hour. Um, if you have to leave uh, for any reason before we finish, never fear. Um, all of this information will be on the Center for African Studies website, um, um, the LAS International Programs website, I think the, and at UIC, Lynette, I'm sure you'll have it on the Black Studies. Black Studies and perhaps even um, study abroad, but um, Kyle can confirm that, but we okay. will have it available at UIC. Fantastic. Okay, so there's no sound to share. So I don't need to do that. Um, and you can see my application. And sorry while I uh, get rid of that. And OK, slideshow from beginning. OK, so this is the name of our program that we uh, have just put together uh, over the course of this past year. It's the Africa Connections Program. And it is funded by the University of Illinois I'll try and get this um, title straight, the Presidential Initiative to Expand uh, the Impact of the Humanities. Um, it's a fund that was that's put together from uh, 
President Colleen's office and we applied for a grant more than a year ago, got this grant, we've been planning hard and now we're now we're ready we're ready to roll with it um so the africa connections program um as you can see here um all of the sponsoring and and uh, uh involved uh, programs here at the bottom of each slide african studies international programs black studies and uh, the study abroad program at the at illinois chicago okay so here we are on the fifth in our information session so what is this program um, it's as I've just said, uh, it's funded by the uh, by the University of Illinois system, uh, and it's a program for undergrad students uh, at Urbana-Champaign and at Chicago. Um, and we call it a program because it's a series of courses, a sequence of courses that involves language study, um, some academic work, a study abroad experience, and a community internship. So. Um, we haven't done um, this kind of linking of programs uh, before, um, and certainly not with colleagues on a different campus. So that's uh, why it's a new and exciting and quite innovative program uh, we feel that we're involved in. And uh, an important aspect of this program uh, is the fact that there's a scholarship um, involved in it. Um, study abroad programs are um, wonderful, um, uh, as, our, as our colleagues from the two study abroad programs will, will tell you all the things that it brings to students. Um, on our campus, we haven't had very many study abroad programs to the African continent, and we all know that going uh, abroad or any kind of international work is, can be quite, um, it can be expensive, even though there are often different kinds of funds available. Um, what this program does, what Africa Connections program does, um, is to offer uh, 15 students full funding for the study abroad part of the program. Um, and um, what that means is that the airfare, the room and board, the various excursions that we'll tell you about in a minute, um, and also lectures with um, on the campus of the USIU, United States International uh, University in Africa, uh, which is, of course, a, a, a fully um, uh, fledged university in Nairobi, uh, will be interacting with some academics and students on that campus uh, as well. So over uh, about a two-week period, it's not a, a tremendously long study abroad, but it's a two-week um, uh, um, experience, I guess, that'll happen in the winter session uh, at the end of 2022 and into January of 2023. Um, the, the 15 students who receive the scholarship will, will um, be able to do the study abroad um, and only have to uh, fund themselves for incidental um, um, things that, 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 that come up. So it's a, the, the, the bulk of, of the um, of the study abroad will be will be funded by the program. Okay, by the excuse me, by the scholarship of the program. Page down. Oh, it doesn't want to go down any farther. I wonder why that is. Um, well, <laughs> I have a whole bunch of other slides, but they don't want to show up. Oh, maybe this will work. There we go. Okay, so um. As you can see here, um, this year in 2022-23, um, will be this. The, the program is going to focus on um, the Swahili language, um, some academic work in the study abroad, going to Kenya. There you see Kenya uh, on the map and the Kenyan flag, uh, and and a photograph of the of a street in Nairobi. So now I think um, I'd like to hand over to my colleague. Um, uh, Dr. Mary Gatogo, who is the uh, head of the African Languages Program uh, here at UIUC, um, to tell us a little bit about um, the Intro to Swahili course. All right, thank you so much, Terry. Um, all right, so um, again, my name is Mary Gatogo. I am the director of this um, 
Sub-Saharan African Languages Program, and, also, and I also coordinate the Swahili program here at UIUC. So I'll possibly just tell you a little, for those who have not taken Swahili in the past, uh, and those coming from UIUC, to kind of give you an idea of what we do here and why it is important for you to learn Swahili. And then we can go on and talk about um, the study abroad program. So uh, here at UIUC, we offer Swahili and we start with the elementary level that is two, uh, two courses, uh, Swahili 201 and Swahili 202. So for anyone who's interested in participating in the study abroad program, you will be taking Swahili 201. And what we do in Swahili 201 is simply introduce you to the language and the culture uh, the cultures of East Africa, because there are many um, and, and different. Uh, and then with, with, the, with the aim of uh, helping you gain every, you know, uh, skills that can help you uh, navigate life in East Africa, engage in everyday conversations. Um, so, but we do not just offer Swahili at that level, we offer Swahili at the intermediate level, uh, advanced level, we have about, uh, we offer about six years of Swahili here. Uh, so you have, if you start with Swahili 201, you can go all the way up to, um, you know, do uh, uh, take classes uh, up to this uh, sixth level. All right, that said, why is it important uh, to offer Swahili here or to take Swahili? Um, Swahili has been taught here for many, many years. And, uh, and, and definitely that says something about the language, the university supports it. But important to know is that um, Swahili is also considered a critical language by the State Department. It also considered a st strategic language. And, uh, and these are not just designations. It means that you can, the government supports the learning of Swahili across this country. Um, and uh, that speaks to its importance. And so uh, by taking Swahili, you are, uh, you are taking a language that your government considers to be very, very important, whether that is because of security or uh, economic opportunities, uh, that is important. So I just wanna go over a few things because once we start talking about uh, Swahili, its uh, significance, its importance, uh, we could take a lot of time and I don't wanna do that. Um, so for some of you, I think those who have taken Swahili before at UIUC, uh, or those who intend to take Swahili, uh, mostly students come to class because they need to meet a, their language requirement. Uh, or sometimes their friends say, well, Swahili is a good language to learn. Uh, but there's many, many reasons and benefits to taking uh, Swahili. Uh, so as I said, the government considered it, considers it a critical language. Um, Africa considers Swahili uh, critical to its unity. And so it's the language that is, uh, it's one of the official languages of the African Union. Um, and it is taught across many, uh, many schools across Africa. And it's not just in Africa, it's taught around the world. And um, I, I, would, I would say it's one, it's, it's, a lead, it's the leading language. Uh, taught and used um, across the world uh, in terms of African languages. Uh, now, also taking Swahili gives you an opportunity to learn about cultures that are unfamiliar, uh, cultures that you can only experience by learning Swahili. And of course, traveling to Swahili speaking countries. Uh, business opportunities, if you're interested in business, in entrepreneurship, uh, there are many opportunities in Africa. Uh, international businesses are expanding uh, into the African market. Um, now, just recently, to kind of just give you an example of, uh, you know, uh, an example of um, some of the big companies that are uh, finding their, you know, a foothold in Africa. Just recently, I think this is last month. 
uh, Google uh, started their, the, opened their first office in Nairobi this past month. Uh, the intention being to be able to um, expand their activities in Africa, recognizing that uh, Africa is growing very, very rapidly in terms of technology. So if, you, if you're interested in business, uh, that's, the, that's a good opportunity for you, African markets opening up. And so uh, if you're looking for opportunities like those or volunteer work, or you want to work with an international organization, international company, uh, Swahili opens up that world for you. Uh, research opportunities, we've had students uh, taking Swahili um, and have had opportunities to go and research in East Africa. And uh, if all that is uh, not convincing, you can also uh, fund your education through um, by taking Swahili courses here at UIUC. So um, I think that's, that's just briefly what we can say. There's a lot more that you can uh, benefit from uh, by taking Swahili and, um, and, 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 and engaging in activities that help you understand the African continent uh, a little more. They, we try to do that in the classroom, but uh, definitely studying abroad just kind, kind of extends that understanding for you. Um, Terry, do, do we yeah. need to move on to the next person? Uh, yeah, I think so. Thanks so much, Mary. Um, Lynette, I, I skipped over you. My apologies. Uh, uh, I couldn't find <laughs> I couldn't find our program. Would you like to say, Lynette, something about um, language study from the uh, UIC perspective um, for, for your students? Yeah, sure. I think that for UIC students, this is a real opportunity. And thank you, uh, Mary, just for talking about the importance of, of, of Kiswahili as a language, one of the most popular languages spoken in Africa um, and spoken in, I think between nine and 10 different countries in East Africa and the Great Lakes region. So very, very extensive, um, not exclusive to, you know, just Kenya and Tanzania. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an opportunity for UIC students um, because we currently, don't offer any um, African languages on our campus except for uh, Arabic. That is the only sort of African um, language that is offered at UIC. So this creates an opportunity for our students. I also just wanted to comment about how important um, the combination of language learning and study abroad is just as a entry point to you know, this extremely um, diverse and culturally historically rich continent. Um, so, I mean, those were the really the main things. I just think that this um, is a really important um, sort of entry point to the continent of Africa. Great. Um, uh, thanks, Lynette. Um, and we are working out the the modalities of teaching a course here at UIUC that UIC sorry, here in Urbana-Champaign that Chicago students would also uh, be able to take at the same time. So fortunately, now we are all used to Zoom, we're used to remote classes, and we're used to remote learning. So we're working out a way that um, students on both campuses would be able to take uh, this course at basically together um, uh, in the fall of 2022. Okay, so that's, that's the first component part of the program. Um, the second is, uh, as I was saying, academic coursework that would prepare students a little uh, more directly and in another way for the study abroad course. Um, and we'll have some, um, some diversity uh, in that sense uh, between the two campuses. On, here at Urbana-Champaign, students will be taking a one credit global studies course uh, called Kenya Culture, Culture, sorry, Culture, History and Development at UIC. It would be called up. It's, it would be in the Black Studies Department at 294, which I think would be called something like Topics in African Studies. Um, and the way we've structured that course um, is that students would be 
uh, reading a novel by the Kenyan novelist Ngugi Wa Tiongo, uh, and also the autobiography of um, Nobel Prize winner uh, Wangari Maathai as a way to prepare um, for uh, for the for the study abroad and seeing some of the places that they talk about in these two books and um, encountering some of that history and culture. So um, this is the second um, building block, I guess, of the uh, of the Africa Connections program course. Um, okay, so then we go on to oh at, across the top. I hope you can see the coursework and the study abroad together is a is a three credit um, component. Um, so now I will hand back to Mary, um, who's done so much of the work and planning around around what the study abroad uh, will uh, will contain. Uh, Mary, so can I hand over to you? Uh, and then I can go through these slides that have some pictures on them when you tell me when to do so. Yes, you can. How much do you need me to say? Uh, okay. Just a little? Just a little. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so, um, again, we have this very amazing opportunity. And uh, those who have been in my class, I have encouraged you to study abroad. And sometimes I've said it doesn't matter where you go just try and go somewhere. But now I'm asking that, can we all plan and go to Nairobi? Uh, so we will, um, we so the, the program is based in Nairobi and um, we will be hosted by the university that uh, Dr. Burns uh, mentioned uh, before. Uh, it is about 25 kilometers from, uh, the city center or the Nairobi business district. Um, and then we will also be working with a, a study abroad program provider, EDU Africa, which is in charge of all the logistics in country. Um, so we will go to, um, so the idea here, Kenya is expansive and we really can't go to all the places that we would love to go to. But we did make a selection of uh, some places that are uh, important. Well, all places are important, but they are significant in terms of what we're going to be doing and uh, in here on campus, uh, community engagement, learning of Swahili. So these ones have been selected very, very carefully to make sure that we maximize uh, your cultural learning when you study abroad. So we will make a trip to Mombasa. Mombasa is where Swahili all started. So uh, that so while there, we will explore various historic uh, sites uh, as we learn about the culture of the Swahili people and the history of the Swahili people, as well as the global connections during the medieval period uh, and, and interactions with um, with Indians and Arabs and uh, which all gave rise to the Swahili uh, language and culture. Um, now, to, Mombasa is also a great uh, place uh, in terms of tourism and tourism is one of the leading uh, uh, exchange, you know, uh, foreign exchange in, in Kenya. Uh, Kenya gets a lot of, um, money from tourism. So we will have, if you're interested in those kinds of things, you have a lot of opportunities here to talk about, to, to discuss uh, tourist act, uh, tourism and how that um, impacts local communities. Um, in Nairobi, we will uh, go to different places. Uh, we'll visit the business, dis uh, the, the Nairobi business district, uh, Think, think, reflect on urbanization, reflect on economic disparities as already you can see from that picture, uh, talk about the, because this is the economic hub of the country. Uh, and we are going to be thinking about issues of development, be able to explore these issues as we visit these places. Um, I don't know if you have the next one. So. Uh, so we will be able to, to, to go to different places in, 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 in Nairobi itself. 
Uh, Terry, do you have the next slide? Uh, I think that's okay. I think that's the, okay. that's the we, picture the two okay. that have to do with the, <laughs> All right. with the study abroad. All right, then we will also go to just a, let me let me just um, let me just mention these ones quickly because you've listed them over mm -hmm. there. So we will also go to a a peri. We well, would say possibly a peri urban uh, location that is Limuru, and here we will be able to interact with. Um, a group of Mau Mau uh, movement veterans. Mau Mau movement um, is the movement that led the struggle for independence uh, in Kenya. And there are the few seniors that are remaining. Uh, we, we will be able to meet uh, a few of them and be able to talk to them about the their, their, their struggle for independence, their perceptions about where the country is going politically and economically, how independence has changed uh, Kenya in various ways. Um, so if you're a historian um, and you're interested in um, topics like those, you will get a chance to, to talk and get first-hand information. Uh, from those who struggled uh, and who fought for independence. Uh, here we will also visit a tea farm. Uh, if, uh, as some of you might already know, uh, the agricultural sector is the backbone of the Kenyan economy. And um, when we talk about development, uh, we, we cannot talk about development without talking about agriculture, without talking about tourism in Kenya. Uh, we will also have an opportunity to visit. I just want to kind of make sure that we, yeah. And well, at the T form, we we ask to, to for that students be given a, an idea of how people pick tea. And as you're picking tea, you're able, you possibly will be able to uh, discuss um, uh, issues of labor. Uh, and um, you know production of uh, exports like tea, uh, so and the history uh, of tea growing, which um, emerges from a historical period uh, when the British settled in Kenya. So and then we will go to Sagana, which is a which is in central Kenya. And here you will be able to um, interact with uh, one of the largest communities, members of the largest communities in Kenya and learn about their culture. And then we will visit Masai Mara and we will not be visiting Masai Mara as uh, tourists. This is a leading tourist destination, but we will be visiting as learners and we will uh, interact with communities living in the vicinity of the national park talk about and reflect, discuss issues of environmental conservation, um, conservation of uh, traditions and um, a lot more. So there is something for everyone to learn. So these are just um, um, activities that will help us uh, explore and reflect and discuss a variety of issues while we, um, while we are visiting. All right, so um, if you have any questions, we will uh, take your questions later, but basically um, that is, that is, that those are some of the activities, there's, there's a lot more, but that those are some of uh, the main activities that we will uh, engage in. Mary, did you mention Mombasa? I'm sorry. Or, yes, did I, I did. That? Oh, okay. Yes, I did. I'm moving through things quickly because oh, okay. no, no <laughs> no, we don't have a lot of time and we want to kind of hit on, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, let's see. Now the third building. Well, the, yeah, the third main building block of this course and one of a uh, program. I, I beg your pardon of the program and something that also um, makes it, I think, somewhat new for all of us is to then have the students who've been doing these sequences, uh, this this uh this learning in different ways um to have them interact with members of the various communities that they find themselves in so um i'd like um to ask lynette and sheldon i saw that you were here um sheldon uh, uh turner um i saw i saw your 
pop up on the screen. I'm not sure if uh, Sam Smith is with us, but um, Lynette and Sheldon, would you two like to say something about why we're linking the academic and the language and the experiential learning of the study abroad with a community internship when students return for the spring semester in 2023? Um, Sheldon, you want me to go first? Um, I think for, um, well, I'll, I'll focus on UIC and um, Chicago is a place with a very large um, immigrant population, a very large and diverse um, population of African immigrants, um, first and second generation um, from different countries. And a lot of those countries are actually countries where Kiswahili is spoken. Um, and I'm not saying we are exclusively going to focus on those communities in Chicago, um, but we have a large Burundian um, community, a large community from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, the United Africa Organization, which is the organization on the slide that um, Terry put together, um, is a very uh, large and well-established um, African advocacy group based in Chicago. And so one of the sites for potential um, internships and engagement will be, um, or one of the sort of institutional partners will be the United Africa Organization. We have not um, finalized the design of this component of the program. So at this point, I think I'll just leave it at, we are organizing at UIC through, our um, LAS 289 course, um, a sort of community engagement component that will focus on African connections in Chicago. Great. Thanks, Lynette. Um, Sheldon, anything you'd like to say about um, your program in the Unit 4 school district? Um, yeah, hello. Hi, everybody. I can, I'll, I'll just, I'll just be, uh, I'll just put Sheldon on the spot and say that that is Sheldon in the beautiful shirt down here in the corner. Um, so uh, please go ahead, Sheldon. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, so with me and what we do, uh, I would, the idea is to, uh, for a lot of our young men um, in the community and in our schools to know more about their the culture, this culture and identity, uh, because I believe that a lot of the, the things that's going on in the community is because of a lack of identity. So uh, connecting the, the, the intern and these pieces, these pieces from Africa and learning more about our the, the culture um, and breaking down the barriers with the University of Illinois and the community, I think this, is, this would be great for us. Okay, thank you, Sheldon. Um, so, so just to sum up, we have language learning, we have academic work, we have a study abroad, and then we have the community intern internship and connections piece, and all of those pieces together make up the Africa Connections program. Okay, so now uh, I guess I'd like to hand over to um, Kate Abney and Cal Rosh, who are the study abroad professionals on our two campuses, and uh, they can talk us through the timetable and the way we envisage um, uh, involving student applicants into the program. So, um, Kate, can I hand over to you? Hi, everyone. Thank you, Terry. My name is Dr. Kate Abney. I'm the Associate Director of Intercultural and Global Learning, and I'm going to act as the program contact if you are a UIUC student, um, Kyle, Dr. Rausch, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Kate. Hi, everyone. My name is Kyle Rausch. I serve as the executive director of the study abroad office at UIC. So for UIC students who are interested in applying this program, I can be one of your points of contact, especially if you have general questions about preparing to study abroad, um, questions about the application process, which Dr. Abby is going to go through in a moment, because you will be applying through UIUC's application. But I'm, I'm here as another resource for you. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so I have just been, I've been chatting to a lot of folks in the, the chat box. Uh, I actually got a great question, and I meant to send it to the person who asked it. Instead, I sent it to, to everyone. My apologies. Um, 
but I think the, the information is still valid. Um, there's a bunch of other things that we're going to discuss as we go along that have to do with academic course enrollment. I want to emphasize that this is, this is the first time that all of this, something that looks like this has happened. So necessarily, we're going to be making sure that all of these pieces fit together as seamlessly as possible for everyone. Um, as Terry is uh, showing in the PowerPoint, and as I put in the, the, the chat as well, I put um, the different times there. Uh, today is obviously the info session. We're kind of talking through the, the larger structures and some of the details. Um, by the 15th of June, uh, we would like to have everyone's applications submitted within um, the My Study Abroad application. Okay, and that is a My Study Abroad application. I put that in the chat. Um, you'll see that it's the app.studyabroad.illinois.edu. Um, what you're going to do is if you are a UIUC student, you'll use that specific login. If you are UIC, you'll use the um, alternative login. You are then going to look for GLBL298, Kenya Culture uh, History and Development. Okay. Um, you're going to start your application in that fashion. Um, there are a number of different components within the application. One thing that I want to uh, just point out very specifically now, folks, is that we have a recommendation letter that is due that you will submit via uh, the, the application portal. It's a great idea that while we're thinking through finals right now, and that's where your focus and your energies lie, that you think about who are you going to speak to about a recommendation? Is that going to be an academic advisor? Is that someone that you have worked with? Is that a professor that you have particularly close affinity with? Any number of people can serve as that recommender and we all really appreciate that notification in advance. Not lastminute.com, 24 hours in advance. Hey, <laughs> Prof McDuffie, hey, Prof Barnes, hey, Prof Jackson, may I please have the recommendations? Okay, so we're gonna do that in advance because also it's summertime, right? We're all busy, we're working, we're doing different things. Let's dignify our time and um, those mentors' times. Um, we are going to have a pretty fast turnaround time for this program. And that has everything to do with the different courses that you are going to be enrolled in. Um, whether that's a hybrid course for Swahili, whether that's a black studies course with Lynette, um, whether that is whatever it is, we're going to figure it out, but we also need to ensure you get involved, all right? Some of you may be wondering about overloads, um, those types of things. We're gonna figure it out, okay? So let's not stress too much about this. Let's take this one step at a time. Um, the acceptance letters, uh, as I was just alluding to, uh, that's about a three week turnaround time. Um, we are going to uh, be distributing those around the 22nd of July. And then we would ask that you accept within within about a week um, uh, in terms of uh, accepting the offer and then committing to the program. And we're going to ask that everyone is registered. All of those fine grained details are sorted out um, for you to register by the 15th of August. Um, I'm going to put my email in the chat. You have carte blanche to email me basically whenever you want to. Um, I'm going to actually be for once in the United States the entire summer. So we will be maybe within a time zone or two, but certainly not um, eight to nine hours away as I, I normally find myself. Um, and uh, that is really all I have to add right now. I think we're just really excited. Uh, Dr. Rush, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Uh, no, not today other than um, at some point within the next week, I'll aim to have um, just a basic information page on our website for UIC students. It will redirect to the, the application page though at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. So you can, if you already know you wanna sign up for this program, you can you can already go to the link that Dr. Abney posted in the chat. You don't have to wait for my page. So um, I'll throw my email in the chat though. And again, UIC students, if you have questions or just wanna connect with me, you're welcome to do so. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we can see each other. There you all are. Hi. Because um, I also have missed everything that's been in the chat. <laughs> um, so uh, I, uh, we have a, just a couple of minutes. Um, 
uh, Professor McDuffie, the next thing is for you to encourage students to apply along with uh, Professor McMillian. And if Professor Jewell joined us, um, I don't see his square, but maybe he'll still come in. So anything you'd like to add? Well, first of all, I'll keep it short, but uh, good afternoon, everyone. And it's great seeing so many of my students here. Um, definitely impressed. Um, and uh, I really do hope you will apply to this program. Uh, you know, it might be kind of gray and rainy here, but I suspect right now in Nairobi, it's blue skies and right, warm sunny. and beautiful and enticing and it's calling it. Um, <laughs> all, all, all I can say, and you've heard me say this before, um, you know, traveling overseas, especially to the continent has been transformative. Um, it, it made me the person who I am. And I think there's such, there's nothing like traveling overseas uh, to learning about the world yourself uh, career opportunities, life opportunities, things that you might have never expected. So hopefully you all will apply. Um, this is a great opportunity, a fully funded trip to Africa. Oh my goodness. Um, so again, I won't say anything more, but if you have any questions, please contact me. And of course, please contact my colleagues and all of you who are online for my classes. Great job uh, this semester and hope to see you in class again. Thanks, Eric. Um, Dr. McMillian, anything you'd like to add? Why, certainly. Thank you for having me um, and welcome everyone. And thanks for being here. And my presentation almost sounds exactly like Professor McDuffie. So I'm wondering, did he sneak into my office and grab no. my sheet of paper? <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that. Not at all. Uh, uh, we just work together so closely that I think we think alike on all levels pretty much. But thank you also to my students who are in um, the room here as past and present. Um, and yeah, for me, I just want to say it's a life changing experience um, going study abroad. Um, of course, I mimic everything that Professor McDuffie had mentioned, but it's also a great time to, you know, see the world. I mean, in this opportunity, you're able to go for free as well as earn college credit while doing so. Um, meeting new friends, I'm always eager to meet people no matter where I go, no matter what space I'm in. And it's, it's been such an educational and life-changing experience meeting people from various countries. And the majority of them I'm still in contact with today. I mean, and this has been over a course of like 20 years of um, having these kind of excursions, et cetera. And so it's just, it's amazing. It also looks great on your CV or your resume. It also connects you with other ideas that you would have not thought about while in the US when you travel abroad. Um, There's so many connections. I know quite a few students who have gone overseas or you know in other countries and actually transfer to um, not leaving the university, but transfer their careers to another country and have been very successful in doing so. Like they mentioned technology opportunities and things of that nature. I know a few couple of students on here are um, involved in computer sciences. And so this would just be an amazing opportunity to make those connections, developing those language skills that you would not have the opportunity to do so otherwise. Um, and just opening your mind to various um, adventures and things that you would normally not um, be involved in at all. This is just a great opportunity. And I can go on and on because I love <laughs> study abroad and uh, just visiting other countries, period. So I hope that you, you know, take on this great experience. I've never been able to go or be involved for free, ever, <laughs> ever, ever. So that to me just... I was like, wait, what? Free? Say free? <laughs> um, so yeah, please. And I hope you, you know, reach out if you have more questions. Everyone here is knowledgeable um, in this in this area. So yeah, I just hope you take advantage of this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you both so much. I, I saw a lot of uh, a lot of affirmation of everything you you both just said in, in the chat. So uh, now um, uh, is the part where it, if anyone has questions, and we hope you do, um, uh, please uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself and uh, anything you'd like to know, we're going to try to answer your question. I see a hand up from Kia. Please, oh, hi. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I just had a quick question. So um, I was wondering, so if students are accepted into this program, 
how will that affect um, their like current schedule like for the fall like 2022 semester because I know we already enrolled for classes and then and everything so say if, um, with the additional credits for this program um, students are entering an overload of like credits like would we just have to talk with our advisor and kind of make that adjustment to our schedule or would we be allowed for that overload to get those credits for this program? I see Kate is nodding and I think you might know, be able to answer that question. Yes, um, so there are certain people that can wave magic wands for lack of a better, a better uh, explanation. Um, it would be a, administratively on the back end, we would apply for the overload on your behalf. Um, it's not something that you would necessarily have to uh, provide a narrative for, um, given the, the folks that, the, the individuals who would be approving those overloads are on this call. Uh, so they would be in favor of the, the overload status. And then um, on the back end, we would, we would process that for you. It's okay, actually, yeah, it sounds yeah, scary, but it's not, it's not a big scary <laughs> process. No, yeah, for sure. Cause I was like definitely kind of intimidated Absolutely. for like mainly for that reason and everything but definitely I still would if I could still partake in the experience I just wanted to know how that worked thank you for answering yeah of course and I say a magic wand I mean I think I think more often than not we position <laughs> students in like this default deficit sort of setting it's not a it's not a good look for anyone and we can make things actually quite easy uh, and right, that's what we're you. aiming to do thank you so much Great question, Kia. Thank you very much. Um, Arlicia, I saw your, your, your hand up. I think uh, Kia touched on a lot of points, uh, like a lot of questions. Well, the big part of the question that I had, um, but I was already registered for like a language, specifically Korean I was taking. And I was just wondering like, would you guys recommend taking both like Swahili and Korean or like choosing one? Good question. Um, Mary is our linguistic expert. So Dr. Gatolo, take it away. Well, I, I would say, I think that would be determined by how many credit hours you, um, you have for four. Uh, it is possible to take two languages at the same time. They're different. Uh, but if you're really interested in uh, the study abroad experience, I would really say that you prioritize Swahili. Um, and so another question that possibly might, I, I might answer here that might be helpful is that we offer Swahili in the summer and we enroll students from different universities. So if you might consider that as an option, uh, that is welcome too. So for anyone who's worried about, you know, like a heavy load in the, in the, in the fall, you can also take Swahili in the summer. We have classes that will be starting in mid-June. And um, it is an intensive program. And I, I will be sharing the, uh, the website here just in case you want to learn more a little, uh, I, I mean, a little more about the program. Uh, but definitely you can. So look at your, the, the number of credit hours. Um, it, it is possible to learn two languages concurrently. That's what children do. They, they learn their mother tongue, they learn English, they learn Swahili, at least where I come from. They, they mix them up, but they, still, they eventually are able to separate them. So. Thank you. I think, Arlissia, the mix of Swahili and Korean <laughs> will be a wonderful language. Um, okay, um, let's have some more questions. I actually had a quick follow-up question to that. Please go ahead. Um, um, so I thought it was really good that we do offer as well, Haley, like in the summer, just to kind of relieve some of that stress for students and everything. Um, do you think it's still like, even if we don't, are, if even if we aren't accepted into this winter program, just for the experience, kind of like recommend taking that course like in the summer. So, you know, if we are accepted, we already have that finished, but also if we're not, we just still have that that growth and intelligence into that language and culture? Uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the, 
if if I can say so, I mean, one would what one of the things that we hope will happen with that would be that students would just be so like excited by this whole thing that they would carry on taking Swahili or another African language or another language. I mean, you know, as For Americans, sure. we're we're kind of we're kind of de in in deficit when it comes to learning uh, the languages of the many millions of cultures around the world, and so. Um, uh, the, there's a couple of ways in, into our program. We've outlined the main one, which would be to take that Swahili course, that hybrid Swahili course in the fall. But there may also be students who've already taken an introduction to Swahili and they would want to apply to the program. Mm -hmm. That would be fine. Or they could um, uh, engage via the SILM, which is the Summer Institute for Languages of the Muslim World, which our colleague, thank you very much, Donna, uh, uh, put that in the chat, which is how, which is uh, which in, includes the Swahili language teaching that uh, Mary was referring to just now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Two great questions, there, Kia. Thank you very much. Um, um, Terry, let me let me just also clarify something in terms of sure. uh, the Swahili um, the Swahili course in the summer. Mm. All right. Yeah, so considering that, um, and of course, in recognition that, you know, sometimes students have the, you know, like heavy workload or, um, you know, your schedule may not quite allow you to attend class during the normal instruction hours. So we have a, like a special section of Swahili in the fall, so that if you're, if if your schedule doesn't allow you to join our normal uh, like normal uh, classes, then you can join the what we are calling a tutorial, which will be a little more flexible um, and uh, will be held you know like to times and days of uh, so meeting days and times will be decided between the instructor and the student so that you know we can accommodate as much many of you as possible so if that's a concern as well that is something that we we are going to be doing so we are trying as best as we can to be as accommodating as we can be and flexible great point thank you very much for that can i just uh, make a, a, ask a question though um please I mean, and specifically, I'm thinking about UIUC students who will hear this information. Uh, Mary, the other course, Swahili course offerings that you mentioned, are they also being taught in a hybrid format? Hmm, good question. I'm, I'm just saying, so we can just clarify that. So, you know, UIC yes, students Yes, might. yes, I should, yeah, I should have thought about that because previously, it, the, the last two years, they've been offered online. So I think my head is still mm -hmm. like there. Yeah, so they're going to be offered on campus. Um, yes, this this summer. So I basically 201 is the course that's going to be taught in the hybrid format. So that's the course that UI, UIC students should apply to. In the fall, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. No, I just wanted to clarify that one point. Yeah. Yes, yes, they would apply for that in the fall, unless, um, yes, I, I, I don't know, we have had students come here, you know, from different universities, University of uh, Michigan, from California to take the summer classes. Uh -huh. But then again, that depends on the student circumstances in the summer. So it, it's still open. The only uh, challenge would be for students who are not able to kind of relocate uh, temporarily here in Champaign. Okay, great. Uh, Professor McDuff, do you have a question or a comment? I do, or, or, or rather it's, it's for the students. And I've spoken with a few of you and a few of you have um, acknowledged and, and there's certainly no reason to feel bad about this that not only have you never been to Africa but you've never traveled outside of the US. And this might be a good time perhaps with the time that we have left if this is okay, Dr. Barnes, maybe if uh, students have any questions about just the kind of basic logistical challenges or questions that you might have about traveling overseas, passports, visas, 
again, traveling to the continent. I mean, what I can say very briefly is, um, you know, unfortunately too often um, African-Americans hear so many negative things about, about Africa and traveling to Africa. Um, I've, you know, I, I don't want to go in terms of that safety issue or security, but I, but I feel much uh, safer overseas on the continent than I do here in Champaign-Urbana. Um, so <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I just wanted just to see if, you know, if students had any kind of questions about traveling, traveling overseas, especially in Africa, please. Uh, um, I see Kia, please go hi. ahead. No, I'm say actually my mom um, made a good point when I mentioned her the trip just like, like just about like whole like Africa's economy and everything and how so different it is from here in the United States. But that gave me the question. Um, I was reading about like immunizations and everything. So will we have like a like if accepted and everything get a list of like the certain ones we will need? Or like how do we figure that out? Like can we just go to the doctors and say, hey, I'm going on a trip? I need I need vaccines like how do we go forward with that and knowing specific ones that we need for this trip okay so the now that one is right in the wheelhouse of Kyle and Kate so I'll leave that one to you both um but on the safety and security issue I mean our our study abroad offices on both campuses work very hard to make sure the whole trip is is vetted um by you know folks who think about uh, issues of safety and security as, as you know, as their, that's, that's their job. So um, I'll, I'll also say that there'll be at least probably three um, folks who, who've been involved in the planning of the trip going on the trip as well. So uh, it'll, it'll be um, uh, well supported in lots of ways. But I said I was going to hand over to, um, to Kate and Kyle on the vaccinations and requirements question. So let me do that. I'm not going to jump into a TED talk because my background is infectious disease and we're not, we're, that's not what this is about, but because um, I, I will do that. Uh, so we will walk you through all of that. All right. And, and I have to echo what, what Prof. McDuffie has stipulated. It's your first time out of the state, out of the region, out of the country. Welcome. It's going to be one big adventure, right? And um, we're going to walk you through basically every step of the way, whether it's a new passport, uh, the visa that we're going to need, um, or the vaccinations. And that goes, it's the same for UIUC as it goes for UIC. All right. Um, Kyle is there to support. I'm here to support. Um, if Kyle is on probably a much deserved holiday over the summer, then I can answer your question um, or vice versa. Whatever it is, we're going to figure it out together. Okay. And really no question is too big or too small. Um, you don't know what you don't know, right? Um, I did put in the, in the chat, uh, as did Kyle, um, some different resources. This is also available. Many of these resources are available within the actual application portal. Um, other information will be forthcoming uh, once you are accepted uh, regarding visa application, passport application, et cetera. Kyle, do you have anything that you'd like to add? No, um, beyond just uh, using us as support, I can uh, share at least that UIC's campus, I'm not sure Urbana Champaign, we actually do have a travel health clinic that students can visit. So if you don't have um, a physician that you feel um, can address your questions about travel health, um, here at UIC we do. But again, we will connect you to those resources at appropriate intervals as you go through the application and pre-departure process. Um, right, okay, so we had a question from Jalen who, who joined us late. Welcome, Jalen. Um, uh, uh, Kate put something because she types faster than I do. And I also said that we'll put the recordings on our various websites, but if there's something that, it, that you'd like to ask us now, please uh, go right ahead. And in the meantime, I see Tyron, uh, your hand is up. Tyron Ousley, oh, please go ahead. Yeah. All right, so, um, once again, my name is Tyron Ousley, and I'm a first year um, sociology major. So just thinking about um, how this is going to be pretty much like, you know, one of the first connections and partnerships between the actual UIUC and the uh, UIC um, campuses. 
Um, how does that turn out as far as, um, not necessarily competitiveness, but how does that turn out as far as the application pool? And like, you know, what type of factors applicants should be um, wary of when applying? Uh, well, we hadn't kind of seen it as a competitive process between our two campuses. We've, we've, we've all been working like hand in hand since the very beginning. Um, and I think in terms of, uh, I, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting question. Ty Tyron's making me think, um, I, I, I think, you know, we hope to, um, you know, assess each student on their letter of motivation and their and their transcript and the letter that comes from a recommender. Um, and I'm pretty sure we'll have a just a group pool of ap applicants, um, um, you know, to 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 look at. But we we don't have a we don't have a uh, what's the word I want a, a, a quota. <laughs> That's the word I want. Uh, between the two campuses, I, I'm I'm pretty sure you know we'll we'll all we'll we'll be doing all of that together. I I hope did I did I did I answer your the question that you had? Oh uh, um yes you did you answered the question. It was just um as far as me thinking like um usually when it comes to opportunities like these like um I just know like I would most certainly would want to like you know further my process into it so it's just as far as like you know just thinking um i didn't know how big i guess to think about or like how um basically i don't know it was just the fact of counting into university i guess i was thinking about and i just wanted to see like you know um, pretty much the range of the connection and you answered it um very well and i understand okay so great you. Uh, Lynette, you, do you yeah, want to I'm, add something? Mm -hmm. I'm, Tyrone, were, was the question really about just how competitive the the program will be? Yeah, it was kind of along the lines of that. I wasn't really seeing that it was competitive throughout the whole info session. I was mm -hmm. just really just thinking about like, you know, it's two universities. So I was just thinking maybe it will be a bigger pool of applicants just because of, you know, um, considering those two sizes of the, of the university. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of pondering along those lines. Well, I would just echo what um, Professor Barnes said. Um, but I don't know if we mentioned that there are a total of 15 scholarships. And so that might help Tyrone. Um, and you're absolutely right. It is two campuses. Uh, because it's a pilot program, we don't know how many applicants we're going to have. So a lot of this is up in the air. But as Professor Barnes said, you know, then it will just be based on the nature of the individual applications. There's not going to be any specific number from either institution. It's just based on the application. And because of that, we also hope that, you know, the, those of you who are students, please spread the word. Um, uh, please let your friends and and your colleagues uh, uh, know. Um, you know, it's it is a it's the very end of both of our semesters now, um, so uh, we are happy. I mean, I mean, we would do this again in a heartbeat. Uh, have another info session, but it it would be hard to or to advertise. I think to students because everybody's going far and wide, but. Um, we're, we're really very serious about sending us an email or someone who wasn't able to come today to send us an email. We will put the recording up on our websites and we, you know, we want to involve as many people as we can. Uh, Anissa, I see your hand up. Please go ahead. Hi, um, I had a question earlier in the chat. Um, I was just asking, um, do you guys have any suggestions about readings or videos that we could get into over the summer if we're accepted to kind of learn more about the language and the culture a little early on? Oh, what a wonderful question. Oh, well, that, oh, Anissa, oh, wonderful question. Uh, right this very second, the, the answer I think would have to be not yet, <laughs> not yet. Um, but uh, we would, we would that that would be an excellent thing to 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 be able to do um, a little bit in advance. So thank you for that idea. That's wonderful. Um, any other questions, comments, thoughts? You're welcome, Anissa. Um, uh, um, I yeah, 
people might have to go to their to the to, to the next thing they have to do. Um, so if there if I don't see any other hands, thank you. Uh, oh, oh, Professor McDuffie, I see your hand. Yes, Dr. Barnes, real quick, quick question. I have a student, perhaps there are other folks here online, or perhaps they have friends who might be interested in the program. For students who are graduating in December of 2022, would they be eligible for this program? So they'll be here the, this fall, but they're graduating in December 2022. And I know of at least one, if not two students who 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 this might affect. Um, so I don't know if you have the answer or if we should just speak privately. Again, I don't know if there's anybody here that might be in that situation, but I just wanted just to put that out there right quick. Well, the 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 that last part is a is an important part of the program. So maybe we could maybe we could work that out. And I think that's an interesting question that we hadn't actually considered yet. So um, you know, if a student is interested, uh, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't say absolutely not. Um, but but we'd have to work out a way to keep that keep that connection. It's about connections, right? Keep that connection going. Um, uh, okay, so I, I think we're at the end of our one hour period. So um, thank you all colleagues at Urbana-Champaign in Chicago. Thank you all very, very much. Of course, we will all be in touch constantly. Students, thank you for, for, for coming on a reading day. It's the end of a long semester and a very, very long and strange year. Um, thank you so much for, for coming into our info session. Again, contact us with any any questions, and we really look forward to your applications and to getting to know you better. So, um, so thanks everybody. Take care. Good luck in your finals and your last papers, if you know that's what's facing you over the next week or so. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye.